All right, thanks for staying with us. So Governor Ifan Yoko of Delta State says his government has written a protest letter to President Mohamed Buhari over the James Ibari loot recovered by Nigeria. Well, discussing with me is legal practitioner and publicity secretary of the League of Ndokwa Professionals, uh, Barrister Ivan uh, Ufeli. Thanks for staying with us, Barrister Ufeli. Now, Thank your, you. Good evening. Yeah, your governor was in the news just yesterday and he has uh, broken his silence concerning the recovered loot. And he says uh, that they have written, that's the government, has written the federal government. Specifically, he talked about um, President Mohamed Buhari and that uh, he's in talks with uh, the uh, the Minister of Justice, uh, Malami. And I understand that your group also, Ndokwa uh, Professional League, has actually uh, taken the matter to court. Uh, can we get uh, details concerning what uh, your actions are? Yes, um, we started the, the protest really because um, we have looked at the situation and then looked at the, the extant laws that regulate um, uh, the conduct of the, the federal government and the state government and how this play out. Section 162, of the uh, constitution clearly states uh, the issue of uh, the separation between the state fund and the federal government funds, okay, which is clear. Uh, any money that is standing in credit between the federal government and the state government should be, you know, transferred to the state government. And then when you look at it, the federal, the, 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 the state government earned that money, and then the money was laundered. So we started the protest, really. Having looked at the laws critically, we wrote a, a, a letter, a, a reaction notice to the Attorney General of the Federation. And then after that, uh, we gave uh, seven days within which uh, to get a response. When we didn't get a response, we had to go to court on the issue to, to test the law as regards this. I listened to the governor, uh, my, my governor, uh, critically. And uh, I see that uh, the approach is diplomatic the approach is political i mean the approach is uh, the way they have come about it but our own approach is different because uh, if the people gives you a mandate okay and then uh, there is an issue of this nature and the people want to take uh, to air their grievances and also talk um uh, lend their voice to what is happening there, there, there's nothing wrong in doing that that's exactly what we are doing by the government, they are taking a position. We, the civil society in Delta State, we're also taking a position. The, the end result is that this fund, okay, was sourced from uh, Delta State. That is that is the source of the fund. And if you look at uh, Article 35 of the United Nations Convention uh, on Corruption, uh, uh, you look at, it, it states clearly there that, um, you know, where you have funds of such nature, uh, proceeds of corruption and crime that have been taken to a source, to a different location. That money, once it's recovered, should be returned to the victim. In this case, the people of Delta State are the victims, okay? So we feel that, um, the, that that funds must be used for the people of Delta State. The governor had said that either the government send the money directly to the state or use it for specific federal government projects in the state for which the federal government can uh, transfer the funds direct to the contractors and other. That is all diplomacy. There's nothing wrong in uh, taking that kind of position. But we also, as civil society, the League of Ndokwa Professionals, have also, also taken our own uh, uh, stand on this, given that we understand the laws, the, both international and the municipal laws, that they are all on our side on this. Besides, there are precedents in Nigeria. Uh, when uh, Dipre Alemesia, you know, London, by our state government funds to the United Kingdom, the funds were returned to the state government, okay? Uh, the same thing happened in Plateau states. And then, now is that after the federal government is signed an MOU with uh, the British government. Okay, let me, is, let me play is, a bit of a devil's advocate start. now, Barrister Evans. Yeah, let me play a bit of devil's advocate. You've mentioned, you've cited instances of what the federal uh, government, you know, has done with other states. Uh, if the federal government has set some sort of unprecedent and uh, we have an attorney general of the federation who understands uh, this extant law, in your opinion, uh, what would you think, or what do you think is the reason uh, behind the federal government's um, stand on wanting to spend uh, this money on behalf of other Nigerians instead of just for the benefit of um, the Delta, uh, Delta residents? and indigents I think I think I see it more from the angle of intimidation 
and, and discrimination. Um, uh, that's how I see it because we have precedents and then the Attorney General of the Federation cannot say he's not aware of uh, the, 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 the very prominent case, AG of Lagos State versus AG of the Federation, where the Supreme Court made a categorical statement that the federal government cannot hold, hold onto funds that belongs to states. Okay? Um, and and uh, if you look at the international side of it, you find out that the same thing, uh, the, the, the laws are, are very clear on this issue. And um, to say that they sign an MOU, a sign which is like an agreement, like a yeah. treaty uh, or something of sort, um, uh, it, by the section 12, subsection 1 of the 1999 constitution amended, as amended, whenever Nigeria signs a treaty, an agreement, an MOU with another country or an uh, international organization or a country, uh, such document must be subjected, okay, for, for ratification and domestication in the National Assembly. Okay, so that has not been done. So in, 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 in effect, that agreement is more or less um, a piece of document that have no breadth of law. Okay. Uh, it cannot be binding on Nigerians okay. based on our sovereignty, and then based on the, the fact that it requires domestication and ratification. All right, Barrister so Evans. So it, it is... Yeah, all right, Barrister Evans. Uh, our School of Thought uh, believes that one of the reasons why the federal government is uh, trying to take or is taking that particular stand uh, could be that uh, they are afraid that uh, their funds uh, might be relooted in court and might not really be expended on the state and, of course, uh, the bulk uh, of residents. Uh, but then again, uh, does the federal government... Uh, has uh, such uh, you know, justification to want to do that, judging by the fact that uh, some of these uh, looted funds recovered over time are still being questioned? Well, that, that, that is not a good reason to deprive the other state of her funds, OK? Uh, like, like, like you see, the fact that uh, there is a tendency that uh, possibly the funds could be relooted re does not mean the federal government should not return it to the source. What the federal government should do, therefore, through the instrumentality of uh, the ICPC and the EFCC, is to ensure that once this fund is returned to the people of Delta State, not the government of Delta State, not the government of Delta State, please, that fund should be returned to the people of Delta State. How Maybe can the fund be returned fund directly to the people of Delta State without being returned to the government? It, it can be returned. It, it can be returned via a trust fund. You can create a trust fund and put that money in in that trust fund to hold for the people and then when when the state decides what that fund should be used for then the, the from the trust fund that project can be funded from there okay that's one way of looking at it the, okay. the reason i say the people of delta state is because uh, in the past we have seen how the, the resources of delta state have been mismanaged that is why when you go to that state with a huge capacity of uh, oil production and gas uh, production. They, 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 the villages are on, on develop, underdeveloped, and then the, the, even the, the towns are not as developed as, as it should be because uh, a huge chunk of the resources that is acquired from this region are, are, are looted. They, are, they, are, they, they go into private pockets and private bank accounts, and a, 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 a huge chunk of it are also laundered. So we, we, we share the same fear that the federal government shared that. Uh, possibly it could be removed. But we are saying that that is not reason. That is not enough reason. Okay. That first of all, let the money come back to the other state. Then the mechanism for which that fund will be protected can be set up. The federal government have the EFCC, they have the ICPC, okay? And then the people of the other state can watch over the fund. All right. And you also use a trust fund, like I said before. All right, Barrister Evans, uh, just before we we'll let you go, you are a Delta indigent. And you said that um, your governor is uh, using some sort of um, diplomacy to handle this issue. So you'd rather the state uh, government uh, puts it in a trust fund and uh, expedite actions on how it will be spent rather than the federal government uh, spending you know, for the state as uh, your governor has actually suggested yesterday. Yes, I, I would rather a trust fund is created so that the money could be clearly defined as funds belonging to the people, then through the House of Assembly, okay, they can go into deliberations and conversations. 
as to the most pressing need of the average Delta. Then by the time we come to that point where we have understood the issues and we have gotten the most pressing needs of that state, of the youth of that state, of the elderly of that state, or children of that state, then we can use that fund to develop it. If, if I may suggest, if I may suggest the healthcare centers in Delta State are in shambles, okay? The, the healthcare centers in Delta State are, are in shambles. Uh, uh, and I think that that, that funds could possibly do a lot in that area because remember the entire fund is is uh, 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 10 million pounds that's the entire fund only 4.2 is going to be released for now okay because it's going to be released in trenches right. so you find out that that's a huge fund that could take care of primary health care okay which is largely lacking in their state and which um, the government have not really taken proactive measures to see how they can you know, tackle this issue of uh, primary health care. And that is the reason why you have high mortality rates in, in a lot of uh, villages. And All right, other. thank you so and much. And the issue of pollution and the rest of it. All right, thank you so much for your thought and your input um, concerning this uh, burning issue that is still uh, topical at uh, Iberu Lit, uh, Lut, I wonder why I keep on saying Lit, uh, Iberu Lut, and how it should be expended. Uh, we have been speaking, uh, of course, uh, with uh, the Publicity Secretary of the Prof uh, League of uh, Ndokwa Professionals, uh, Barrister Ivan Tofeli. Many thanks uh, yet again for your thoughts. You're welcome. All right, we'll take a short break, and uh, when uh, we return, I'll be giving you my take. And here's my take. The lack of political will and the incursion of the organized crime into the law enforcement structures at the federal and national level in Nigeria has perpetrated a culture of impunity. Now, six years into the administration of President Muhammad Buhari, there is not much to show for it in the fight against corruption. It behoves the National Assembly to enact a legal framework for the management of these recovered stolen assets. And that's Plus Politics. I am Justin Academia. We return again 7 p.m. tomorrow. Bye for now.